C could you walk us through uh, your technique evolution from going from uh, 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 wire cutters and an X-Acto knife to, mm -hmm. to where, you are, where you are now, what kind of uh, additions you, you step through and said, oh, I could do this and I could do that. And okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The best way to describe it is kind of going into what I was taught when I got serious into this. So mm. there's a couple things that you do. One, you acquired basic flush cutters or side cutters. Mm. In, whereas flush wire cut, cutters yeah. kind of have a, a diamond cross section of two blades that come together in the middle. Flush cutters have a, a straight edge. Mm. So you're not going to cut right up against the part. You leave a little bit of room. If that allows you to get in there with an exacto knife, you know, which is going to be standard. You mm. will be using an exacto knife, and you will change to a fresh blade every model mm. that you build. <laughs> you will do this, and you shave it down. You shave down the remaining nub. I like to leave around a millimeter or two if I'm mm. using a normal flush cutter. I, I honestly, I'm cheating a little bit. I have what's called god hands, uh, which Ooh. are, you know what? Well, I don't what are those? <laughs> God, God hands are the single best flush cutter that you can buy for reasonable amounts of money if mm. you know somebody in Japan. Mm. They, they, they go for around 80 to 90 bucks on the open market. They're not wow. worth more than 30 or 40. Mm. Gundam Planet actually just put out their own line of flush cutters, which are perfect for everybody, and I urge anyone to pick them up. They oh. are equal to Tamiya flush cutters, mm. which are generally, well, were generally the best ones out there. Mm. But anyway, going back mm -hmm. to the technique, what I kind of got into was you know shaving down the nub very gently and even that's going to leave a little bit of an impression mm -hmm. you then move on to progressive wet sanding which sounds more intimidating than it is mm. all you're doing is you take 400 grit 600 grit and 1000 grit sandpaper you glue them you glue the sandpaper to popsicle sticks with super glue you dip them in water you shave you sand down the nub mm. a little bit with the 400 grit dip it again get it a little bit more flush swim move up to the 600 repeat move up to the 1000 repeat this has left you with a perfectly flush surface that looks like a nub was never there. There's a wow, little wow. bit of discoloration, and you're not going to notice this because you're going to use flat matte top coat. Mm. And you, you don't have to use anything fancy. Any Michaels and AC Moore will sell Testor's Dull Coat, which just comes in a rattle can. You shake it up, you spray it on, you leave it for about a half hour. And you apply another coat if necessary. Mm. What this does is dull the sheen on the plastic and makes it look like it's mm. been painted. Mm -hmm. That's that's really all you need to do if you want a really good-looking gunpla. Nice. It sounds more than it is, but once you get into the groove, you can finish a high grade in four to six hours. Wow. Not bad at all. Yeah, there's one part that I'm leaving out, and that's mm. fusing seams. In my opinion, newbies should not worry too much about getting things to appear perfect. Mm -hmm. But when you're ready to move up, mm -hmm. seam fusing is not so hard. You just need a decent uh, binder clamp, you know, those little black and metal things that you have in offices that nobody ever uses. <laughs> <laughs> you get some extra thin plastic cement, get your two parts together, drip the cement into the seam so you have capillary action, suck the liquid into the mm. seam, push them together, you get a blob coming out the top, and you hold them together for 20 seconds, leave it for two hours, sand it down. Mm. What this does is take two pieces that would have a big seam running down the middle, and once sanded down, they look like they're one piece entirely. Nice. Oh. It sounds more difficult than it is. Yeah. It's, there are videos galore on how to do this on YouTube. That's what made the difference for me nowadays. You know, In 2005, I just figured, all right, I'm going to build this clip, clip, clip. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to step up your game, and that's an if. When you're mm -hmm. ready, mm -hmm. when you're ready, you do it. Don't let anybody pressure you. Yeah. But the watchword, gunpla is freedom. You're doing this the way that you want to. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want. This is not a grognard hobby where if you don't get <laughs> the, you know, the right variant of air to surface missile, you ruin the entire thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Congratulations. You wasted twelve hours. Yeah. <laughs> Drop kick. You're done. No. Nothing like that. Nothing at all. Nice. Well, I'm curious. Have, have, have so mashups. What what kind of uh, bashing have you? Mm. Have, do you do you 
<laughs> well, what, what's I, your thought? What are your thoughts on bashing? <laughs> well, Gun the Build Fighters was basically done to encourage kit bashing. Yeah. I, I honestly, uh, you know what? My problem is that I'm not a creative kind of person. I don't mm. have the ideas that a lot of people do. And what some people have done is crazy, amazing, good stuff, really good ideas. They'll take different kits and futz with them. Mm. Kit bashing is a very good thing. Do it as much as you like. <laughs> but, you know, me, I'm the kind of guy that, you know, had more fun building Legos as a kid by the instructions <laughs> rather than building freely. <laughs> yep. But that doesn't stop you. I'm actually kind of doing, uh, I'm a big fan of anachronism, you know, things mm. that are in history that shouldn't be there, you know, out of place mm. artifacts, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So my big project right now is a diorama, assuming that, let's say it's 1985, you know, the Cold War has turned hot and the Soviet army is coming down the full the gap with tanks in numbers, only instead of tanks, the Soviet army basically has the Xeon equivalent in terms of mobile suits. Nice. <laughs> so right now, down yeah. in my basement, uh, I have a Zagok, which has been painted with the same colors that would have been painted on a, a Soviet aircraft carrier. <laughs> I have a Zaku-2, which is being done up a la Soviet armor. Mm -hmm. And I've got a Dom Tropin, which is going to be painted like an Su-22 or some other air-to-surface-focused uh, aircraft in that period. Nice. I've got some old decals from scale modelers, which have you know their equivalent Soviet branches branches on them oh. and i'm gonna have them hold one holding up a hammer, the hammer. One holding up a sickle, <laughs> and one of them holding a red banner in the background for a propaganda <laughs> shot nice <laughs> so some people can kit bash i'd much rather reality bash if i can <laughs> yeah after, after this i'm gonna actually gonna try making a bear guy look like mommy tomo eh? uh, they've oh. got some of these uh cool you know add-ons now where you can just strap them to the back of a gundam mm. and you essentially have mounts for different weapons cool. i also have the one eighth scale mommy figure with uh, the musket and a friend who knows how to resin cast it's on nice yeah wow yeah, yeah resin casting it. man yep well, not even my friend. My friend is actually a very skilled cosplay prop maker. She's uh, she sold a um, Majora's mask, like full scale mm. Majora's mask, at Oticon last year for I think upwards of a thousand bucks or so. Wow! So she knows what she's doing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But kit bashing is a good thing. Don't mm. you know? You're really only restrained by your imagination. Mm -hmm. I'm just a lousy example of imagination. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I understand that. Wow! Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, you know, I always thought it'd be something interesting. I mean, when you look at Full Metal Panic, that's like my mm. other favorite mecha series. Oh yeah, because you've got right there the alternate continuing Cold War, be mm. where the Soviet Union does have mecha. Yeah. Now, not only that, they have NATO unit designators. You know, mm. they start with S, as in you know, they in bombers started with B, fighters with F. Mm. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Full Metal Panic is quite interesting. Do you think we're gonna get another Full Metal Panic anime series now that the novels are over? Do you see how much my face just Aww. fell like 10, 10 billion feet down? <laughs> yeah. We're never getting another Full Metal Panic series. Yeah. I'm resigned to this. I'd much mm. rather I'd much rather not lay my expectations flat because if yeah. Kyoto Animation was going to do it, they would have done it forever ago after mm. Second Raid, you know, when it was still in production. But there is hope. Uh, they just announced, I forget if it was Kotobukiya or somebody mm. else, they are re-releasing for, I think it's the 10th anniversary of the second Ooh. raid, they're re-releasing 160th scale kits of the Arbalest and two variants of the RK92 Savage. Nice! They're, they're going to be pricey, but mm. I'm not missing out. When they had these on original release, they were normal pricing. Now you can't find them for less than 100 bucks or so. Wow. I'm buying two of each. Mm. One of each to build, one of each to resell in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart. Mm. Well, I'm I'm curious now. You mentioned uh, you're part of a club. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, it's it's not really like a club club. We're just the East Coast uh, Gunpla Builders Group. You know, mm -hmm. we're it's a Facebook group. I got into it through my friends Sophie and Victor, mm -hmm. and you know, it's I mean, we put, it's a Facebook group where we all exchange, we post works in progress, ask mm -hmm. questions, give answers, post advice. You know, uh, fan wank when appropriate, <laughs> and it's a very collaborative group, a very good bunch of people, okay. and you know, we had a little meetup going. You know, for the New York mm -hmm. New Jersey area people. Uh, at a wonderful hobby store, you know, Hobby Masters in Red Bank. Mm. And we just spent the day building, chatting, hanging out, you know, buying stuff. And it was a good time, good thing to do, you know. Yeah. There, when I was in college, there was this uh, book I had to read for a social science course called Bowling Alone, how America more or less doesn't have group hobbies mm. anymore. Mm -hmm. 
it, it's good to reverse that trend, especially with you know millennials, you know, as people <laughs> classify us. Mm-hmm. You know, look here we are hanging around doing things an Elks, Elks, Elks Club would otherwise do. Yeah, and you have bigger groups like the International Plastic Modeling Society. Mm. You know, they're uh, they've been around forever, and they're a good, but they're a hell of an organization. I was actually at Mosquito Con, their New Jersey convention. Mm. Man, what a corpus of knowledge and skill that is. <laughs> but and, you know, scale modeling is very intimidating. Mm-hmm. Gunpla is a lot easier to get into. Simply put, I think because we've got a more youthful community mm-hmm. that we're okay with these, you know, fictional things that we're doing together. Mm. And it just kind of makes a little bit more sense, you know. Also, yeah. in terms of design, Gunpla is modular. It's easy to paint mm. the forward arm joint of a Zaku than it is the entire upper body of an MI twenty four. Yeah. And you know, Bandai spent a lot of time and money making sure that those model kits are easy to pick up and understand and, and assemble. Yep, I mean, well, let's let's be real here. Bandai does Gundam to make money. Mm-hmm. The again, Gunpla are targeted to at removing pocket money from Japanese junior <laughs> grade school kids. Yep. We, anything that we get into is peripheral solely uh, through a cultural lens. Mm-hmm. But it's one hell of a lens. I mean, I'm basically putting John Bandai's kids through college. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, it works. So, yeah. so so what what percentage of of Bandai would you say is Gundam versus other? Other other model, other model kits because I think they also have the, oh, the have a bunch more yeah Yamato and other things. Is there a is there a uh, an emphasis of uh, interest? Is there, is there an interest of that in uh, the U.S. East Coast or mm. the club or? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's not really a, such a segmented thing that it's gunpla and gunpla only. That's never mm. been the case. Mm. It's really just you know this is, is a mecha model kit from an anime. I like this mecha model kit. I'm going to build it. I like this model that I built. Mm. The same could uh, go to a Cosmo Zero from Yamato 2199 mm-hmm. as much as it could a, uh, let's say, if you get your hands on one of the old Big O model kits. Oh. And, you, know, <laughs> is, uh, you know, that's kind of like one of my holy grails, but they, mm-hmm. they're on the market, just really expensive. Mm-hmm. But, but it's not so much a, oh, you know, this is the Gunpla Club, not the Yamato <laughs> Club. Nobody's like that. Mm-hmm. And if they are like that, I don't want to be around them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Are you guys planning on having more meetups? Yeah, I'm going to start uh, laying down when we want to meet up again in October. You know, I figure yes. every two or three months is a good number. You know, it'll be uh, less short traffic, that's, so that's for sure. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, it was, if at all possible, you know, we got a lot of Pennsylvania people in. I want to get more of the New York Metro people in. You know, I'm tight with the guys at Gundam Planet, so I'd love to get mm. some of them down to the meetup as well. You know, right now I work 15 minutes from Gundam Planet, Ooh. so it's a very, it's a dangerous proposition for my wallet. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. That helps a lot. Yeah, but meetups are a good thing, you know. I'm, I'm, I was hoping that maybe other people in other parts of the coast or the country would mm-hmm. do it on their own. Yeah. You know what? If they don't, that's fine. This is not something that requires other people to be physically present for. Mm-hmm. A good thing to have, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But you know, you do what you like, and you know, I guess it's really from from the way I see it, being a generation that was raised before the internet became so mm-hmm. omnipresent. I am okay with doing this with other people as much as I am okay with doing this with people online. Mm-hmm. There, are, there are so many people that would never meet another gun plot builder in person, or at least don't have the resources to yet. Mm-hmm. You know what? You got Skype and you got YouTube. You got everything you need. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the same, but it's as good as. Yeah. If you can't make it happen. Mm-hmm. Why not? I'm curious. How did you find out about the gun plot? competition yeah the championship well that was uh was it i knew it was happening at oticon uh no and oticon does one every year it's just i think mm. this is either the first or more recent year they've done it for the actual gunpla builders world championship mm. and i learned about that when i was getting into gunpla seriously you know looking on with massive 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 amounts of envy at what people <laughs> were spitting for it. you know i i honestly just threw my hat in the ring and i said what the hell i needed an excuse to build a uh build <laughs> 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 No, really, that's exactly what it is. I didn't. I figured, you know, since a lot of people were going to be entering at the New York Comic Con version, mm. because you know that's where a lot of the people were bringing out their A game, they wanted to display it on a bigger stage. Mm. I was banking on maybe nobody would be in and nobody <laughs> would care. <laughs> you know, so I built um, a build burning. I mm. did it up as a metallic painted build with all clad and candy coating, yeah. as well as actually I switched midway instead of candy mm. coating. I went into a Mr. Color metallics mm. and I. I never looking back. Hmm. It, you know, I ended up with a metal build burning Gundam, which I called, you know, just to, for my own, yeah. I guess, gratification, the Argentum burning Gundam. Nice. 
And you know, simply because I, I liked the way that it reflected so well, it was very, mm. it was flashy. I entered solely yes. for flash, yes. you know. And I hold no illusions. I I held no illusions. <laughs> I wasn't going to win anything, but I was hoping to at least have somebody say, "Damn, that looks cool." Yeah, that's that's really what it was, you know. And early on in the competition, you know, I was thinking, okay, you know what? Maybe if there's a chance, you know, the other entries are okay, but you know, and then it turned out that. The A game was brought, mm. and oh man, some of the stuff that was entered, <laughs> e- even what didn't win, mm. was exemplary, mm-hmm. and it, w- it was doing good things in both the technical merit and in an aesthetic merit. In the end, the w- the uh, winner on the uh, small scale category was a friend of mine from the group and that I met a couple oh, times cool. in real life, you know. And my friend Ash is someone I oh my god, I have nothing but admiration for a lot of the people that I know mm. that do this. She basically took an ST crossbone Gundam. Mm-hmm. You know, SD is like a tiny little scale. It's maybe three or four inches tall. Mm. And she detailed the hell out of this thing mm. and ended up mounting it on the uh, skull weapon set base, which is basically, you know, a skull on a plastic mm-hmm. base. But she took that skull and she applied washes to make it look like real weathered bone. Wow. This was Ooh. indistinguishable from old bones you'd see in a museum. <laughs> wow. And she, she won the small scale category. Mm. The overall winner was a uh, grimoire done up as a ground type unit with mm. a full diorama mm. and a real work of art. Man, just just being on the same stage as them, even though mine was clearly <laughs> not the greatest of the bunch, not an award winner by any case, I'm glad I did it. You know, yeah. I, I knew I wasn't going to win, but it was well worth doing. And can I say about that Burning Gundam, damn, that looked cool. <laughs> that's I mean, all I went for. Yeah. You know? I remember yeah. going down there and thinking, oh, Burning, ooh, that's, <laughs> that's slick. See, all that shine, that was what I was talking about with all clad. Yeah. I'll have to see if I can get you guys a link to it at some yeah. point. But the reflective, the reflectivity of mm. all clad metallics is second only to the metal itself. Wow. You, if you're getting an airbrush and you do it and f- f- do nothing with it other than do metallic detailing for mm. gunpla, you got your money's worth. Congratulations. <laughs> Dead serious. All clad is it, it's amazing in what it can do. Even the non high shine finishes, mm. you know, like standard aluminum or dual aluminum or regular steel, are amazing pieces mm. of paint work it, it, it just takes restraint when you're working with them mm. you got to make sure you have a good base of the gloss black if you're using the high shine mm-hmm. stuff and if you when you're going with the actual metal paint go easy go slow let it dry come back in 10 minutes you know have a coke ha- have a coffee have a beer do whatever mm. you know but or, or even better yet paint another part there we go <laughs> yep yep but come back and go easy all clad metalizers n- need less. Less is more. Mm-hmm. Just the right amount is a lot better than overdoing it. Have you seen some of them, uh, Adam Savage's videos on Tested about his model kit making? You know what? I didn't really grow up with uh, with you know Adam Savage too much. A lot of people like worship the guy. Yeah, and he's he's all right. I honestly don't follow him in terms of what he does. You know, and mm. more power to him. Mm. It's not that I dislike him. It's just you know, I I don't watch much too much TV to begin with. I'm sure, sure it's on YouTube somewhere, but. I don't. I tend to be the kind of guy that gets very envious, and I don't want to. I don't want to be in a position where I feel inadequate. You know. Yeah. I, you know. I. And so when I'm looking up for videos, I'll look for how to do X, mm. or I'll look for you know how X gunpla, or just elsewhere for inspiration. Mm-hmm. But but when you see people like Adam Savage and other mm. you know semi pro or just very skilled amateur scale modelers, mm. damn. Yeah. You know the skill that they bring to the table is insane. Like I mentioned, <laughs> I took a shot at normal scale modeling. I have, uh, I think, four or five casualties in that. Ooh, effort. yeah. 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 Fortunately, yeah. Fortunately, you know, a lot of these were old scale model kits purchased from a little Facebook group that does weekly auctions. Mm. You know, I have some normal scale models for airplanes from anime and manga that I intend to Ooh. do properly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, those I'm less willing to abandon. You know, <laughs> that, but mostly. The scale model building is a separate set of skills that uses mm-hmm. a very similar baseline skill set and a lot of the same tools. Mm-hmm. And the detail that can be put into them, to be honest, so much of the time, I have to tell myself, you might not be able to do this. You can, It's about getting as close to the real thing as you can with mm-hmm. what these guys do. Mm-hmm. But 
a lot of these guys have done it since they were kids, you know, growing up yeah. in the 50s and 60s. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of them, too, I'm still in these groups, you know, for when I make my next attempt. They served in the military. They know uh, what these look like. Yeah. I, I, I've seen so many posts saying, no, wait, hang on a second. We didn't use that shade of zinc chromate. We used this shade of zinc chromate. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to replicate it, here's how you mix it with Model Masters. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Nice. Cool. Well, um, is there anything else you want to plug or talk about while we're on here? Well, I definitely want to, I at least want to give shout outs to Gundam Planet. You know, mm. these guys are, I don't want to say that they're the de facto center for Gundam in America. Mm. They are the de jure, the real thing. <laughs> and I got to tell you, they are the local business that I am so happy to support mm. and to buy my stuff from. I, hell, I buy my figures through their operation. Mm. You know, Gundam Planet, I give them so many shout outs. I'm friends with them, you know, you know full, full disclosure, you know, but you know what? It's a great place to be, you know, and all I can plug is if you're interested in this, do it. You know, yeah. don't hesitate. If you're uncertain, if you've never dealt with the tools before, if you've never dealt with scale models before, if you don't know a sprue cutter from the hole in the ground, mm. you know what? Ask. It's okay yeah. to ask questions. It's okay to learn this. It is a skill set that is, by all intents and purposes, different and unnatural. Mm -hmm. But you get such a rewarding output from it. Gunpla is a hobby that gives back what you put into it and teaches you so much in the same time. It's a rewarding life skill and you get to build freaking cool robots. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, look at that and tell me it's not awesome. Exactly. Exactly. That is just wow well and, and to your point i mean w one of the great parts about it is it's not just a hobby it's, it's a hobby where you're making something you know exactly. at the end of the day you have this thing that you made that you can look at for the rest of your life yep you got a tangible output warts and all you learn to love and grow with your work if you yeah. if you're not in the position where you can accept failures you know what this will teach you yeah. what, <laughs> what it means to fail you know no seriously fail early and often mm -hmm. that's how you learn you know my, my build strike full package good god i've got bad seam joints on that left and right. I didn't know what the hell I was doing to, to fit them together. Mm -hmm. I used a mechanical pencil for panel lining mm -hmm. on parts that weren't going to be seen. Ah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, my first Master Grade Zaku, I tried like hell to file down a seam that I was trying to fill when I realized, wait, that's supposed to be there. That's a panel line. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you learn, and if you're into anime or manga, there's a chance that there's a mm. Gundam design or something out there that you like to look at. I mean, the, hell, the Extreme Gundam has a guitar. <laughs> a a Basara Neki from Macross 7 style was a Thunderbird Karina Explorer looking guitar. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, so you're gonna find something. You know, at least you'll find something unless you're looking for the elusive Tequila Gundam, which is mm. the single most racist plastic model ever made. Uh. I want ten. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, this is the Gundam with a sombrero. So that's yeah. And mustache. And, 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 yeah. mustache. and a mustache. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I should say the other Gundam with a mustache. <laughs> yeah, true. Mustache Gundam. So um, I'm I'm curious. Do you listen to do, do you listen to anything to to distract your your, oh, your, yeah. your mind while you're while you're doing these? I try to, but